Hello Virgo, welcome to my channel, Love It or More. This will be your November 2022 reading for Sun, Moon and Rising. We'll start off with a soundboard just to cleanse the energy and tune in. I will be drawing some themes for the month. Um, we'll have three piles. The first pile will be the energy starting the month. Uh, second pile will be anything that's unseen, any obstacles or challenges for the month of November. And the final power will be the unified energy, the outcome for the month of November. <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> Please be mindful that energies are non-gender specific and it is a general reading. So take what resonates, leave the rest behind. And if this does resonate with you, please give me a thumbs up and uh, perhaps comment. I love to read the comments and uh, let us begin. So nice breath in. And exhale. All right, Virgo, let us see what August August? <laughs> November has in store for you. Let's get a theme of the month for with the Sacred Destiny deck. This will be the theme that you will be exploring for the month of November. Can we have one card please for Virgo for their highest good? <clears throat> I've got noisy neighbours so apologies if you can hear any background sounds but it just all adds to it. Okay. Thank you. We have illumination for you. Have a look at this. So where things have been a bit misty, mystified, uh, foggy, haven't been able to see the way through, illumination comes in in November. We'll get a major arcana for a theme as well as an oracle card. <clears throat> Thank you. Cool. So illumination is bringing in a judgment call for you in November. Judgment call is sometimes the universe telling you, okay, a judgment is, has needed to be made. Sometimes the universe does it for you. Sometimes it could even be a resurrection of something. Ultimately, that judgment call, because it's a major arcana, whatever choice you make, life will never be the same again. Okay? So let us grab an oracle card. What does Virgo need to know for November, please, for their highest good? Thank you. We have dance with life, do something to change your energy. Okay, so if you are feeling a little bit stuck over the course of November where the illumination brings um, brings forward something that need, you really need to make a judgment call on, it could sometimes have the capacity to stop you in your tracks uh, because sometimes the energy feels like it's a serious decision that needs to be made. Something, um, And when you become too serious, what happens is you tend to kind of block off or limit the outcomes. When you limit it, it tends to be quite stagnant, quite stuck energy. So an idea to try and lift the mood and to kind of lift the vibration so it's more kind of malleable, more ethereal, would be to dance with life. Okay, so it's basically saying don't get too stuck in a rut, don't get too kind of caught up in the seriousness of things. Bring lightness to it. Have a bit of fun, okay? Even if it's you kind of dancing naked in your room by yourself and nobody can see you, do it because it's going to change the vibrations around you and help you maybe to see clearly what makes you, what decision is going to make you feel more joyful, okay? Rather than more conventional, more logical, more realistic. You know, it's it's that kind of, let's bring lightness to the energy now. <clears throat> Okay, we're going to go into tarot and do our three piles. This is my deck, the Love It or More deck. Only one in existence as yet, because I haven't published it. 
uh, for my own artwork. So obviously I have a very personal uh, relationship with this deck. Okay, and I will be cutting the deck. To bring out three cards for each pile. I'm not taking jumpers yet. But these cards are still quite slippery. All right, current energy starting the month, Ten of Pentacles. Ooh, we like that. Long-term sense of security, stability. Unseen at this time, a lot of hard work ahead for you with the Eight of Pentacles. Outcome for the month, Queen of Swords, standing in your power, speaking your truth. <clears throat> Under the Ten of Pentacles, we have Four of Swords, some healing. Time to rest, rejuvenate, take stock. Under the Eight of Pentacles, we have Ten of Swords. Something dead, done and over with in the mental body. Outcome underneath the Queen of Swords is we have the Nine of Swords. So a little bit of anxiety there, feeling caged in, uh, feeling at the mercy of um, negative thoughts. That's why it's saying dance with, your, with life. Under the Four of Swords, we have Ten of Wands. Again, uh, reaching that final burden. All he needs to do is cross that bridge to get over to the other side. So he's been carrying a very heavy load, but he's just taking a breather. But he's close to the end. The goal is in sight. Ten of Swords. We have Nine of Wands. Okay, feeling a bit battered and bruised. Um, close to the precipice to get up the other side. You climbed this mountain because you chose to, because it was what you were... Um, believing in yourself to do um, and you are a bit worn out but you can reach the end because the nine represents endings in numerology nine of swords we have eight of swords so we have both anxiety here with the nine of swords and the eight of swords feeling quite trapped which is why it is so important to change up your energy and dance with life <clears throat> So you start off the month pretty strong, but then we have this um, natural ending here. And it's a judgment call that needs to be made on something that is kind of done with. Okay, it could have felt where you were maybe a little bit um, like you were backstabbed or you were um, kind of taken advantage of um, where something has come to a grieving end, even though you worked really hard at it. OK, but that's one aspect of it. Ultimately, what you're doing is you're reaching the top with as it relates to wands. So we do have some quite a lot of sword energy here. Sword, 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 sorry, sword, 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 um, which is talks about the mental body. So even though illumination is coming to light with this judgment, OK, with this kind of ten of wands, this is really connecting over here. You're going to be ending the month feeling pretty um pretty bold in your um, communication in how you speak about yourself how you communicate with yourself as well because sometimes we reach the point where we will take a lot we will we can handle crises we can kind of um you know it's just when we think things are tough we can actually handle even more than we recognize and our emotional body kind of uh, absorbs it all keeps it within and then it reaches a point and that point is here, okay? That point becomes, okay, I'm not going to BS anymore. This is how I feel. This is the situation and I'm moving forward. But we still have quite a bit of anxiety as to whether that was the right judgment call to do, okay? Now, if you look at this card over here, the Nine of Swords, she is in a cage at the bottom of the ocean. Now, you could, you could think of this as a card where the sharks are out to get her, right? And the chain uh, broke from her cage, it could also be, <clears throat> if you think about kind of uh, shark diving as well, it's something that you choose to do. It's something that has, um, isn't really exactly, um, it has a, a certain risk factor to it. There's a certain danger element to it, but ultimately it's, it's generally pretty, pretty safe and pretty kind of protected. So um, it, whatever it is that you've been doing, it, um, while there was a risk factor, um, it's, it's generally speaking, when things are very dangerous, there's extra measures put in place to protect you. Now, the other way of seeing this card is that actually she's just at the bottom of the ocean and that chain that's being released is actually the rescue mission. And the sharks are just playing with the chain. You know, they're just, they're just quite playful energies. So it really depends on how you look at a situation in the mental body. And if you're able to close 
um, and if you're able to remove your hands from your eyes and see something clearly rather than think that you are surrounded by swords I don't know if you can see clearly but there's there's swords in the background and there's swords right in front okay there's plenty of space between her for her to just walk away but instead she's she's following this one particular direction and she's scared doing it okay but she's just kind of hoping for the best hoping for the best but she still feels kind of a bit like uh, oh stuck okay let us clarify so the ten of pentacles please can we clarify the ten of pentacles please <clears throat> Why is the Ten of Pentacles here for Virgo? Page of Wands. There we go. Okay, so some good message with regards to... Um, this is like communication that's coming in um, regarding your sense of security, your sense of wealth. It could also be that someone's contacting you about work, um, about some sort of pay rise or um, promotion, um, uh, promotion maybe, or bonus. This could also be some exciting news that's coming in to do with um, a sum of money that you weren't expecting or some inheritance or wealth coming in. Um, <clears throat> let's go to the Four of Swords, please. Okay, we'll take it. <laughs> uh, two of Wands, Page of Cups and Ace of Cups. Okay, so it feels like as, as we start the month, this, this, this good news that comes in because this feels very uh, prosperous uh, for me. The, the Four of Swords is really that time where you can you have the opportunity now to have a bit of a breather, a bit of a rest, and you're protected as well. For, for some reason, I'm getting protections coming through quite strongly here. So um, because we have the Chiron, the, the Centaur, who's that wounded warrior, um, sorry, wounded healer. And so you are protected. You have now the opportunity to do some rest and rejuvenation um, as you because you've had this good news. So it just gives you a bit of a breather. Um, because you're able to rest because you've had this lovely good news coming in and it's opened a new gateway for you in terms of, oh, you, you feel quite excited and, and quite, um, um, your heart has been, you're starting to feel quite uh, infused with enthusiasm again. I mean, it is an ace, so it is kind of a new beginning, but I feel like it's a new beginning in the heart space of where you can look at what you've got and kind of go, okay, where do I want to go from here with that two of wands? Okay, I've reached this point. I now have a bit of breathing time, bit of breathing space, and I can dare to dream, okay? And that's kind of a very healing, it, it, it gives you that um, peace of mind just to kind of go, okay, I can allow myself time just to sort of, oh, sigh and take stock okay uh ten of wands so final little uh final little stretch that you need to pursue what is the ten of wands all about thank you there's quite a lot of cards but we will take them all eight of wands two of swords queen of cups and queen of pentacles okay so it feels like you might be dealing with two different people queen of Queen of Cups and Queen of Pentacles. Remember, it's non-gender specific. One is more of a kind of a caring, nurturing. So if we were to like compare these two energies, these two personalities, one is quite psychic, a very good listener, um, very sensitive, very um, heartfelt. The other one is like a more down to earth, uh, very resourceful, knows how to get things done, knows who to contact to get things done. Um, and so there's two sort of energies over there. And it feels like that final burden that you need to cleanse off or clean off is something that I feel is work related because we've got the ones there, ones there and um, all of these eight or ones here. Now, that's that tells me that it's very victorious. There's fast movement happening. So even though you ha you can have a bit of a breather, I don't think it's going to be for very long. I think you're going to have a, a, a short respite. And if it's not a choosing of a time to have a break, it is um, where you maybe get an ear infection or you get um, like you need to have your tooth taken out, something like that, which um, compels you to take a couple of days off. OK, but it's actually a good thing. It's a really, really good thing. Um, I'm feeling here as well. Um, yes, yeah, you get that short break. 
and then you just got to finish something off. But it may be a question of you choosing, having to choose, because this is a very vic victorious, this is a very success successful energy. It's fast paced, right? Um, just to close something off, but I feel like you're undecided between two people. Okay, now this could also obviously be perhaps as to romantic is interesting, you don't know which way to go. But ultimately, I feel it's kind of like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation where you can't please both parties and you have to kind of make that choice. But I would say in this case, because it bridges in, because it's we've got these two on either side, it feels like you need to be able to. I know it seems obvious, but choose what's best for you, right? Um, but there's two people involved in the situation and you're not quite sure how it, it feels like they are. It's a sort of a stuck energy. OK, and that is the thing that's leading to this sort of decision that needs to be made. So it's almost like uh, the start of the month as you close something off, as you're tying off loose ends. And it could be to do with a project or business relation or a venture of some sort. Right. Um, you're at the final stages of it, but there's that final um final decision that needs to be made so if for example i know this sounds really bizarre as an example but it's coming up so i'm just going to say <clears throat> if for example you are writing your will okay and you wanted to um delegate a portion of your assets to um a, a, across your loved ones um your close connections and for some reason you were stuck on one particular asset and how to sort of divvy that to between two people how can you do that that's the kind of energy i'm getting i'm not saying that's your story because that's a very bizarre very unique story but if it's it's that sort of situation of like where do i give how do i give myself how much of myself can i give and who do i give to and it feels like you can't it's you're struggling to find the middle ground because you're sort of crossed over there <clears throat> but then the judgment call comes in okay so you're having to work really really hard now so um enjoy the rest while you have it because it's not going to last for very long let's go to eight of pentacles please the moon okay so something's not quite clear cut the thing that you're working on you're trying to gain mastery over it because the eight of pentacles talks about kind of working late into the night higher learning reaching further to gather information but things are not so clear cut which makes sense because the illumination card is here okay so illumination is going to bring something to light what else do we have thank you what is this about three of pet three of um wands there's a waiting period here a waiting period it feels like you're kind of working towards something that you actually don't know is going to really pay off or it's like you're working towards illumination but you you don't quite see it yet um what else is this about thank you something from the past judgment call okay so you're having to look it's weird i feel I feel like the situation of like having to go back over paperwork, having to go back over communications that were made, um, having to research something from the past to gain a bit more information on it. And it feels like, so for example, if you worked in the legal system, you having to kind of go back over maybe a couple of years to really extract the evidence extract the um timelines of something to be able to really get the full picture of a particular situation so this is an example of something where you really have to um uh it's just like go back on you've got to go back and research it um to get the light to get the information because when you talk about light light is both light physically right it's both light as in um, darkness and light and light is also um, information that's what light is so it's like you're trying to gain the information but it's taking quite a lot of work because something that was a bit shady before is taking a bit of time um, but you're going to uh, it, it feels like it's just going to reveal itself <clears throat> okay so what's this ten of uh, swords all about please can we clarify this ten of swords Thank you. The world. Yeah, dead, done, over with, right? You've reached the end of the cycle in this one. But I want to get more information. What is this about? What is it about? This is 
Ten of Swords about, please? I know we know it's the end. I mean, I like the fact that the world is there because it's it shows like end of chapter. You've learned everything that you've need, needed to know. You gain illumination as a result of it, and you're never going to repeat those lessons. So I love that. But what is it about, please? What is this Ten of Swords about? It's like there's no going back on this. Once you re receive the information that you need, there's no going back. Uh, three of three of swords. But something, something that's obviously affected you in the heart space. Something that's really affected you uh, emotionally. So even if it was a work situation, it's it hit you in the heart. Um, you were emotionally involved and invested in this. Um, it could also be, sorry about that, Virgo, you would have just seen a weird there quickly, um, but I, <laughs> um, my my battery suddenly died for a moment there. So I'm just going to repeat um, where I was in the momentum of. It could have been some sort of partnership that you were involved with previously, where now that you've looked at the evidence, you recognize that there's no turning back. And that's what the judgment call is. There's no denying it. There's no denying it. It's done. It's over with. And yes, it breaks your heart. But I feel like part of you kind of kind of sensed it anyway. Um, what else do we have with the Ten of Swords? Thank you. Well, here we have the Illumination because that's the Illumination card with the Sun. We've got the Lovers, which is that choice and that decision. And then the Ace of Wands. Okay, so this feels to me like something that you were working on for quite a while, that you chose to work on for quite a while, but it was something that was very passionate and it was a sort of, it felt like it was new at the time, but now you real, you recognize, no, there's no, uh, there's no going back on this. Um, there's no point rekindling this. So the lover's card obviously can mean like a romantic situation, but there's a lot of wands here energy as well. So it's, it's it can also talk about, um an exciting venture um and an exciting uh passionate project passion project okay um but there's a choice here where it just doesn't seem like it's it's now that you've got all the information that you need it's not going to work and yes it's quite sad but it's not going to work you recognize that the beauty of this church to try and console you in some way is that whatever the situation is for you, it, you actually learned everything you needed to. So we always experience lessons in life and cycles. And um, because we have to learn something from it. It doesn't always seem exciting because, you know, we just want to achieve. We want to achieve. We want to accomplish. We want to gather. We want to grow. But actually, every lesson in life is to teach us something. So it could have been that you learned this much quicker um, than if you'd kind of really stretched it out. So uh, be be appreciative and grateful if you can that you didn't have to stretch this out over an even longer period of time. There is no point beating around the bush. It is what it is. You've got the information. It's not going to work. Okay. Let's go to the nine of wands, please. Okay, we've got the Four of Wands over there. We've got the Knight of Pentacles and we have the Four of Swords again. So again, some healing, which is why it's so important to dance with life, to change up your energy. Okay, a bit tough going. What this decision does is it makes it very difficult for you. Once you've come to the illumination that something is over and done with, there's no, you, you can't go back on it. Um, the choice has been made. The, you, you see the light, you have your evidence, you have your research, and it's it's done. It's done. So the thing that's making quite difficult for you is um, maintaining a level, it's like maintaining a level lifestyle as you come into understanding and full wisdom of this. It's like, for example, for example, when you deal with a crisis, um, it feels like it's very uh, just to keep your head above water is taking all the energy 
out of you just to make sure that you're eating well, you're sleeping well, the kids are fed, um, the bills are paid, um, you know, it, and that's the kind of thing. It's taking you quite a lot of time to do so. But actually, this is a good thing because um, it will enable you to do that healing as well. So you can't take on anything more right now until you just address and deal with the basic essentials. OK, um, then when you can kind of make sure that things have taken a plateau when the dust settles then you can take a breather again you took a breather in the beginning of the month almost to sort of prepare you it feels like we have like a repetitive pattern coming on because <clears throat> you get the opportunity to have a bit of rest and then work 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 hard work 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 hard come to the illumination and and oh dear now you need um recovery from that and then it's go 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 again so um it's going to be an, a sort of an up and down month for you i'm not going to lie Right, so let's go to this Queen of Swords, please. Can we clarify the Queen of Swords? It's a load of cards. We're going to have to take them. Knight of Wands. Ace of Pentacles. Eight of Pentacles again. Five of Swords. Seven of Pentacles the tower and the ten of pentacles okay so there was definitely you're coming to this real bold no bs kind of attitude towards yourself and towards others and all of a sudden you get a bit of a rest again and then you're charging forward again with that knight of knight of wands because you're like fired up now you're fired up um recognizing the things that you worked really really hard on and invested in someone sort of took advantage of you that was something that kind of tended to seemed to um break down a sense of security that you had okay now it's weird how life works sometimes because it's almost like you've been re you've re you're receiving um some support in the beginning of the month to counterbalance a sense of security that you are going to be losing okay so it's like something comes in before something goes out to kind of keep you on the straight and narrow that's the energy i'm getting um so i don't feel like you're losing everything um but you certainly have to say goodbye to something and this is actually it'll always it would always be nice to kind of well i want to keep my security i want to keep my uh what i have and i want to add to it i want more i want more i want more and what's wrong with that it doesn't have to be greedy it's just you know a growth um but this seems to me like um you reach that point of no return you're speaking it you're speaking your authentic truth saying it how it is because you recognize it's something you worked really hard on um it's it's not worth its weight in gold that simple and so that sense of uh, what you put your heart and your energy and your blood sweat and tears in has come crumbling down okay but you still got this so you're kind of safeguarded all right <clears throat> let's go to the nine of swords please why is the nine of swords here what you worried about queen of wands uh you could be worried about somebody else um it's it's weird it's like having said goodbye to something now the queen of wands remember non-gender specific but the queen of wands is quite a bold energy queen of swords is, is she, she 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 doesn't kind of mince her words but the queen of wands is kind of a little bit fiery okay um this for some reason feels to me like there's somebody that you're a bit worried about that's going to it almost feels like a a backlash it, there could be potentially be a backlash after closing something off um and you're worried about that uh, can we get some advice please thank you seven of swords what it's telling me here because the seven of swords can also be a very strategic card because he um um in the story of this card is that there's uh, two armies at war and in the middle of the night he sneaks off to the opposing army and uh, steals their ammunition essentially and sneaks off so that the war the war um that so in one case obviously it means that the other uh, the opponents don't win the war because they they don't have their swords they don't have their ammunition but another way of looking at it is that um it could still you could still come to a conclusion without there being too much bloodshed 
okay? So it's quite a good strategy, and I feel like that's the best way to handle the situation. If there's somebody who is very fiery, who may, who you're worried about, um, is going to kind of come back to you having made this final judgment call, I think it would be very useful for you to um, first have a little dance in your room to change up your energy, and then see if you can somehow um, communicate in such a way that does not fuel and them to have ammunition okay so sometimes that's literally a case of uh you know if if, if you have two people having an argument and they and and they're in the swing of it and it's backwards and forwards backwards and forwards backwards it's like they're throwing little um fireballs at each other you know and getting harmed every time um Sometimes it's better if, if, if someone were to come to you and just offload and give you a load of grief. Sometimes the best thing to do is just try and emotionally detach, listen to them and say, I understand, but I still need to do this. That's a more sort of compassionate way. And that's what I mean about being very conscious in your headspace about not fueling the fire not feeding the fire and I think that's the best way to handle any sort of communication that is actually causing you a little bit of anxiety how am I going to deal with this how am I going to where's it going to go bear in mind it's a nine the nine of swords so nines represent the natural endings anyway so it won't really kind of get worse in this because you've really got the 10 there okay so I would say the strategy here Yes, you, you can, you can uh, stand in your truth and be your true self. You have to. That's really important. But try and detach yourself from the emotions. And where you feel that there is someone who might um, trigger you, may kind of, you, you're kind of worried. It almost feels like a, quite a bullying character. But anyway, um, whoever comes towards you with that sort of fire, find ways to soften it with compassion and i think that is the thing that's really going to serve you um coming out of it uh it too because you can validate yourself 100 percent. but sometimes in a situation if we justify ourselves too much if we try and validate and defend our position too much it can also tend to cause the other person to become overly defensive. And then you've got the same kind of energy backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards. So in some way, you need to kind of not mirror them with that. You need to kind of do something in an unexpected way um, that is not going to allow um, more to come at you. Um, it's like creating a very invisible shield around you, allowing them to let off their steam but not giving them the opportunity to rise and get even angrier. This feels like a very sort of strategically passive application. Bizarre. Never, never really had that before. But there we go. Eight of Swords, please. Can we clarify? Thank you. Oh, Ten of Cups. Yeah. You're feeling a little bit still within all of this, the result the, of this illumination of something that's over and done with. Um... You're feeling quite trapped in your head about what your happiness means to you. Um, oh, Wheel of Fortune, bottom of the deck. So I love to see that. Change of fortune your way. Things are moving in the right direction, even if it doesn't feel so in the beginning of, in, in throughout the month. Because it's, it's quite a heavy month, I have to admit. But whatever this thing is that you're gaining illumination on, now it 100% it could be like a romantic situation that you recognize now. No, 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 no. It's, it's over. There's no denying it. It's over could be a project that you've been working on or a job that you've been working on whereby no it's over it's uh, I can't do it I can't people please everyone and I want to um I need to put it I need to put an end to this because what I was feeling and what I was thinking now I've gathered the information and I it's it's breaking my heart but I have to just close this off and then tying up loose ends and as you come to the end of the month you're almost like um feel a bit uncertain about what your ultimate happiness is, you know, what your family home should look like, what your ultimate 
uh, fulfillment should look like and you kind of you, you you're wanting to sort of shut yourself away a little bit um and because sometimes when we feel trapped it's a part of us is because we don't really want to walk forwards you know it's it's too scary because we're actually kind of still quite vulnerable and particularly because we've got this healing card and this healing card there's a lot of healing happening throughout the month so it's kind of difficult to believe in um you know future prospects when we're still in the process of um absorbing and dissolving and detaching from the stuff that we're currently dealing with so i feel like if you end the month off with just like i just need to finish this off i just need to get this done and dusted and i don't have room right now to be looking at my happy home my ultimate fulfillment because i just need to get through this that's what it's feeling like so the calling card here is dance with life if you can find any which way, any opportunity to just change your energy up, it may soften this um, mind that is kind of in analysis paralysis. It's oh, oh, too much. It's it's causing you to feel very heavy. Okay, that seriousness. All right, like I was talking about in the beginning. So um, I'm not going to lie, a tricky month. Um, but I did get that feeling of being protected with Chiron there. And there was another card that was protecting you. Where is it? I mean, she's very protective as well. The Queen of Cups. There was something else. Where was the other one that was protecting you? Oh, I can't find it now. Because this feels like this is all kind of happening to you, you know? Yes, it could be affecting your close connections, but it's like it's happening to you. Um, so you're protected by Chiron there. Look it up. C-H-I-R-O-N, the wounded healer. He does heal. He comes in. Got this blessing over there and then dance with life. You've got the angel here who's also the angel of protection that could be helping you as well. Um, so you are protected more than you realize. Um, trust in yourself, trust in your own truth, and you won't go astray, all right? So I wish you all the best for November, and I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.